So there will be a time when you come into work and suddenly there's a lot of work that needs to be done. How would you deal with that? Hello, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobum. And in today's video, we're going to talk about a situation in which you would have to think fast, think fast, think fast to resolve computer issues. So this video is good for help desk tier one, tier two, or desktop support or tech support, or if you're the guy that just simply works at a location as tech support for a company. So in this case, we have four different uh, trouble tickets that came through the system, but they are something that was left over from the previous shift or from the previous group that was in charge of that. So I'm gonna show you how I would quickly resolve these issues. So this kind of uh, give you, will give you an idea of how I'm thinking and I will actually give you a kind of uh, uh, an idea of my level of knowledge or level of expertise, a level of experience. But before we do that, please take one second to like this video. I really appreciate it. It makes a big difference for me and without any further delay, let's get into it. Okay, so here we go guys. Uh, we've got some tickets we're going to work on. What is this? Oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys watched my previous video uh, on Actor Directory. Uh, I do uh, suggest you check it out. Uh, we worked on some of these people. We created some user accounts, put them in their different groups, and we got, you know, the different people that we created on there, like Mary Pipkins, Mike Bobson, and Larry Buffett. And we put them all in there if you want to check that out. I do have a video on that. It's, uh, uh, I think it's Actor Directory for Beginners or something like that. Yeah, check that out. It's a good video. All right. So I made some of these tickets during uh, testing of the live stream that I made, I want to say a couple of weeks ago. So they are uh, quite expired. So as you can see here, time to do is negative 85 hours. So that's many, many days past due and you, you don't want to see this in a ticketing system at all. Uh, you want them to be fresh. You don't want them to have that. Well, you know, okay, let, let me just create that, uh, just a fake ticket. Just so you guys can see, fake ticket, how it uh, looks like whenever uh, you have a freshly ticket that comes through. Of course, this is going to be a different uh, looking for different uh, ticketing systems, but for this one, we're just going to, it's going to, yeah, there it is, pops up. And it, it, when it just creates it for Jira ticketing system, it's eight hours um to do it to fix it that's the deadline eight hours all right so let's see we have my desktop icons are missing and uh it says here i am missing desktop icons please help me so what can cause this now there are many things that can actually cause this from user deleting the files from uh, some kind of a change on domain so let's say somebody uh, gets transferred to a different department they get moved into a different group within a domain or within active directory if you will and um, suddenly now they are missing different icons because uh, this can be due to the like different redirects that different groups may have and again if you don't know what i'm talking about at this point you might want to check out my active directory video that i mentioned previously and uh, when it comes to this uh, video, I'm just going to kind of give you quick answers and show you quick answers on some of these tickets that how I would go about resolving them. If you want to know exactly how to do these tickets, you know, in, in the sense on how to contact the customer, how to add internal notes like this, how to reply to the customer, how to talk to them in general, and customer service just in general, how to work actual system. I have many, many examples of videos on that, and do check that out. There are literally, so if you go to my channel, youtube.com forward slash Coleman, and go to the search box within my channel, and just type in ticket, and you'll see all of those individual examples that literally go in super detail on how to do all of this stuff. And it's very, very good, especially for somebody who has never done it. Anyways, I'm sorry, I had to get that out of the way so you guys... Uh, you know, have more resources to actually check out in case you haven't watched my previous videos. So again, I'm going to go through all these tickets that are in the system and I'm going to give you quick answers of what I would do in order to resolve them. So this one is I'm missing desktop icons. Please help me. So it could be just something that, you know, user went through like this and just like deleted or went through like this and just kind of drag things into the recycle bin or anywhere else. And, and then again, it could be somebody who moved to a different department. You kind of have to ask them all this stuff. Did you move to a different department? Uh, why are you, you know, it's kind of unusual to have missing desktop icons. So when somebody moves to a different department, they're moved to a different group within Active Directory, which 
can have different desktop redirects. Uh, these desktop redirects is something that is set up for individual departments that allow for certain desktop icons, uh, files, even files like this, or anything else within that you can put literally in a folder. And um, those people within that group will get desktop redirect, meaning that they will get all of those uh, redirected files pushed to them. So let's say somebody logged into this computer and they belong to a certain group. And let's say that certain group is going to always have, for example, these files in it and their desktop will always have these files. They will get automatically redirected. Uh, they will they will automatically get these files redirected to their desktop like this, you know. So if they've been moved to a different group, chances are they may no longer have these. You know, so that's another thing you can do. Obviously, you can look through a recycle bin to see if there's something in the recycle bin, if they've deleted it. And uh, it depends what it is. They may be asking about uh, specific software that it's missing. You know, software could have multiple icons because, you know, there are some software that has more than one function and they have more than uh, one app within that one software. So they could be missing those. Uh, is it all icons? If it's just some, you know, all these things we have to um, kind of ask them first in order to kind of help them and kind of trace back the steps and help them figure out where what happened to them. So that's how I would approach this ticket here. Here's another one here where it says, I can't hear people through Zoom meeting. So if we look at this and it says today I had a meeting, but I can no longer hear people. So what is this? I mean, Zoom meeting, we all know what Zoom meeting is, and that is just a software or an application that's used for communication right so you know if they can't hear people through zoom meeting that means there's some kind of an audio issue going on and of course for that i would go through the uh, sound control panel what i usually like to do is i would right click this uh, volume icon and of course make sure that it's you know normal stuff that it's not muted and this and that so what i like to do is go open you know open sound settings and go to uh well first like right away right away you can you know make sure that their output is set to whatever it is so in this case we got real tech set the real tech high definition audio we know real tech high definition audio is just a built-in audio for the computer that's not their headphones that they might be using so you might want to drop down and select the headphones that they're using you know so that's just one place where you can look at it. I mean, they haven't mentioned anything about people not being able to hear them, but if that's the case, obviously you want to go to input and make sure that the microphone is selected. Or if you see an issue like this where it says no input device found, then we have another issue. Then for that, I would go to sound control panel, which is over here. And then uh, for, you know, but since the issue is they can't, he, I can't hear people through Zoom meeting, um, chances are that the, their headset is not selected. In this case, we, there is no headset. The only thing that's selected is just the real tech, which is the onboard sound. So we want to make sure that their headset, whatever it is, um, might be selected. As a matter of fact, I'm going to plug in a headset over there so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so there it is. I plugged it in over there and automatically selected it, which is good. Uh, so yeah, of course, uh, the issue might be simply that their headset is not plugged in, but chances are pretty low, you know. Uh, but, you know, we want to make sure that it has that uh, green circle with the white check mark that it's selected. So if you have it uh, set like this, so you can, you know, this automatically actually selected it to be a default the communication device, which is fine. That could work too. Uh, but let's say it's set up like this and you, you know, it's not set up as default. You might want to do this and set it up as a default and you can do this, make sure it's set as, uh, you know, uh, automatically communication device. But, uh, and here's the part of it now where the microphone comes up. Now we can see that it's selected and you can see that there's nothing plugged in. It's a recording part of uh, just the real tech part of it. Uh, that being said, uh, make sure that if you go inside of the application, whether it's Zoom, uh, WebEx or whatever it is that they're using for meeting, make sure that you go inside and make sure that this their headset is selected just like so. I have many videos on this, so I'm just going to move on from this. But this is typically what the issue is when it comes to audio issues. We want to make sure that everything is selected, volume raised, tested, whether it's uh, them not being able to hear somebody or whether they're, people are not able to hear them. So just go through those settings and uh, yeah, it should be able to get you on the in the in the right direction. Here's another one that says, I am missing a program on my desktop. So they usually, uh, usually realize this when there's an icon missing. 
when there's an icon missing on their desktop. So you can start from there. Let's say they're say they're saying, I don't have my Google Chrome. You know, chances are maybe it's just a shortcut that's been deleted. So you want to go to the programs and actually look for it to see if it's installed there. That's your first step. If indeed is a missing and you know how they they say in this example, they're saying my program on my desktop, chances are it's just the icon. So if it's just the icon, go to recycle bin and see if it's been accidentally deleted and bring it back. But if, if the software is indeed missing, uh, you would have to basically go inside, uh, usually within the start menu somewhere here or within uh, the programs themselves you would know you know the company that you're working for you would know what kind of uh, distribution software that they're using to push different programs so for example you see all of these things that are installed on here chances are aside from microsoft stuff but like let's say there's other stuff installed in here for example uh, we got open office we got oracle and uh, you know stuff like that chances are that this type of software will be controlled by another software that does the distribution meaning installation of these software for all the computers within a company so it's a program that controls installation of all of these things so you would go in here and search for that program and look it up either here or the root of c it depends how it's all set up but you would make sure that indeed that program that they're missing is listed in there so all you have to do is just make sure that it, it, see if it's in see if it allows you to reinstall it and there should be a way to do it a lot of times you would select it and just select install you know and they have different options like uninstall this is the repair maybe this and that that's how i'll go about it but if they are uh, no longer have the the software that they need this might be some kind of a licensing issue you have to kind of figure out what happened to th their program so Sometimes, sometimes people that control what they call subscriptions, uh, software subscriptions for the company, for each computer, for each individual within the company, sometimes um, they will remove uh, licenses, licenses, uh, program licenses from the computers, and they would sometimes automatically remove them, or meaning that, that they would remove the program automatically. So. The way you can check this is basically by finding out what the uh, host name is for the computer typically. So you would find out what, so the name of the computer host name or computer name is the same thing. Host name is generally used in a uh, business type of environment. So host name, computer name is the same thing. So you would n take this name, tech support, uh, as the computer name, as the host name, and look it up in the system that uh, allows you to look up different subscriptions that are, uh, added to this computer named tech support so and then you will look for that specific subscription for that program that they're missing and if they're missing that subscription they may have to or you may have to assist them in order to get that software again you know so all right that's how i would go about approaching this one so let's move on and for that we have a ticket here it says i think i may have a virus on my computer from mike moser it says here this morning i received a weird message that said my computer is infected i can't click away or use a computer at all so this is a really good uh, example of something that you may encounter um, in a help desk but also desktop support if you're in a help desk you may have limited tools but if you're doing desktop support and you happen to be a guy that's like on site then there is something you can do about it depending on the help desk you may be able to do something about it as well but generally speaking, if, if it's a message like this, you definitely want to take care of it right away. So if you are just a text, if, okay, well, let me, let me start from the beginning. I apologize. If you're help desk, all you can do here is kind of uh, go with your feeling on this. You know, the, the, the ticket literally says this morning I received a weird message that my computer is infected. That you might as well assume that there is a virus on there right off the bat. So the best thing you can do to them or, or to them, not to them, but with the user is ask them to disconnect the computer from the network and turn it off. So that way, or, or just, you know, unplug it from the power. You know, that's what I would do. Just let them, tell them to shut down, turn it off, especially if they can't click on anything, you want them to turn it off. And when you're tier desk, when you're tier one help desk, that's pretty much all you can do. And then from there, you may have to refer them to their local uh, tech support people. You know, they could, they may have somebody at the office in their building. So let's say there, it's some kind of a large building. There's, you know, I don't know, 500 employees. They gotta have somebody there 
who is the, their tech guy who deals with this type of stuff. Now, if you are that guy that deals with this type of stuff, uh, there are steps that you have to take in order to remove this virus. Generally speaking, in a business environment, the best thing to do is just, you know, re-image the computer, meaning that you would delete everything from the computer. But sometimes you have to recover data that's on there. Let's say user saved a bunch of important stuff on the computer. Then you got to take certain steps in order to uh, retrieve this because you can't just pull them off. So typically you would what you would do is take a hard drive uh, from this infected computer. You would physically take it, put it into another computer and set it as a slave drive. But make sure that other computer is updated meaning windows updated me make sure that their virus definition is updated and make sure it's completely updated uh, to make sure so it doesn't get infected as well make sure that the computer is off the network meaning that it's not connected to the, the company's network or anything like that because if we don't know what kind of virus this is this could be something that could spread you know what i mean so this is all in case you have to recover data from it all right from there um you know, the, 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 this drive is slaved. Whenever you slave a drive into a computer, meaning you add a second hard drive to the computer, in this case, this infected drive, you take it, you put it inside the computer, and you just plug it into the power and the SATA connection, chances are. And then what it's going to look like is just going to show up as a second drive like this, you know. So as long as it's like that and it's not the system drive, and you don't execute anything, meaning you go inside of this drive and you don't click on any executables or anything. Matter of fact, I wouldn't even go in, into it right away at all. I wouldn't even open it up. Um, you know, the chances are that as, as long as you don't run anything, your computer is compu completely safe because you are running things off your C drive and the, everything that's running in the background like this. See, these are all background processes. They're all running from your local C drive and not from the slave drive, uh, like in this example. So as long as you don't execute anything, you, there's no way for a virus to actually execute itself. You know? uh, that, would be have to, that would have to be some highly sophisticated virus. It's, it's, it's I want to say 99.9% .9 impossible for that to happen. So the reason you want to have it slaved like this is so that way you can actually scan it. So if you right click it and then you can just scan it, for example, with, you know, Windows Defender or whatever the installed antivirus software is it or and is, is on, on your computer. That way you will find the, uh, the in infection, you would remove it. And at that point, you can go inside and recover anything that might be on there that they need. You know, so that way it's perfectly safe to go in and ask them or just kind of look around to see where they might have data that you want to recover. Of course, the drive itself, when you slave it, might have a BitLocker encryption on it. For that, it's going to ask you for a key. You see how this one has a little locket on it. That means it's unlocked. But, you know, if you uh, if you do get a prompt, like you would double click it and it would ask you, I made a video on this, on how to actually unlock it. So I do have a video on how to deal with a BitLocker encryption. You double click it and it would say, nope, you need a password or you need the BitLocker uh, key. And then you would get that and then, you know, go from there. That's another layer of security, which is good. So that's how you would go about it. And of course, after you're done with it, remove the drive and I would just, you know, uh, wipe it. I would wipe it clean. Okay, I hope I'm not going too fast because this is a video and which I'm trying to make uh, just in my spare time. I really don't have that much spare time, so I apologize if I'm going too fast for people that are used to me going slower. And I think that's it. This is the last thing one. The last one here is the fake ticket one. And again, I have a lot of examples of this type of stuff, how to do everything from, from the beginning to an end. All right, guys, I'm going to go to my uh, face cam outro, I guess. Well, there you go. I hope you find this video insightful. Sometimes you got to think fast in order to resolve all these issues quickly. In this case, we had few tickets that were left over and we took care of them. Uh, there are many, many things you can do with that. But with experience, you will become faster and more knowledgeable and will be able to resolve these issues quickly. It's not a big deal once you know how to do all of this stuff. So never shy away from trying to learn things on your own. It's incredibly important because that's how you learn new things and that's how you become smart. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care, I'll see you next time, bye-bye.